Let's take a look at example three. A debt of $125,000 is to be repaid with quarterly payments of $4,500 at a rate of 11.2% compounded quarterly. After six years of quarterly payments, the borrowers wish to increase the quarterly payment by 25%. The question is how many of the larger payments will be needed to repay the outstanding balance on the debt. Beginning with the time diagram, let's see, we've got a debt of $125,000. So at today's date, we've got a $125,000 loan. We also know that we have quarterly payments of $4,500 applied against that loan. So we've got one, two, three quarterly payments of $4,500 per quarter. So we've got, here's our annuity shaping up here, $4,500 per quarter. In fact, we know that we've actually made six years of quarterly payments against this debt, so that would be six times six times four per year is 24, so we've got 24 quarterly payments of $4,500. Let's wrap an annuity bus around that and see what happens here. Uh, 24 payments of, of uh, $4,500 will certainly not uh, cover off all of the payments on, on the, that would be required on this loan because $4,500 multiplied by 24 is $108,000. So without interest, we would only be paying back $108,000. That's certainly not going to be enough to cover the $125,000 loan. The interest rate is 11.2% compounded quarterly and 11.2% divided by four is 2.8 percent per quarter so let's make a note of that i is equal to 2.8 percent per quarter and then after six years of quarterly payments the borrowers wish to increase the quarterly payment by 25 percent so the question is how many further payments will be required well this is a multi-stage problem and I think that what we need to do first of all is to take a look at this time diagram and ask ourselves the question how much are they still going to be owing after the sixth year so what I'm going to do is instead of using a focal date of zero as the present value what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my focal date over here to the end of year six and doing that what that means is that I need to ask myself the question what is the balance that is outstanding on the loan at that time period well the balance that's outstanding on the loan after year six will be the value of the loan at year six subtract the final value of the payments I'm going to subtract the payments from uh, the final balance of that loan and so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an equation of values for that particular focal date that we've selected in other words I'm going to say that the balance that is outstanding is equal to the loan at that focal date minus the value of the payments at that focal date so in other words, I'm going to start off with the loan of $125,000 and I'm going to add interest to that loan at the rate of 1 plus 2.8% interest for 24 periods. I'm going to multiply that by the compound interest factor of 1 plus i to the exponent n. So it's 24 quarterly periods and I'm going to subtract from that amount the final value of $4,500 per quarter. Now this is an annuity, so I'm going to multiply that by the annuity factor for the future value, 1.028 positive 24 less the 1 divided by 0 0.028. So this is going to give me two amounts here, and that those two amounts will help me out with the balance. And so when you work this out on your calculators, $125,000 compounded for 24 quarterly periods, you'll end up with a number of $242,218.44. Store this number in memory one. And from that number, then, we can now subtract the uh, annuity, the final value of the annuity, $4,500 multiplied by the factor. And that uh, final value of the annuity ends up being a final value of $151,095.14. And, and store that in memory too and we end up with a difference being the balance that's outstanding. But before we calculate that final balance that's outstanding, let's take a look and see if we can interpret 
these two numbers that we've just calculated here. This $242,000 actually represents the final value of the $125,000 loan if we had not made any payments whatsoever over the first six years. So a loan, left alone, that $125,000 debt would amount to $242,000 debt uh, after six years without any payments. Now, we did make payments against that loan, and in fact, those payments were $4,500 per quarter. So therefore, it makes sense to subtract from that the final value of our payments. And the final value of those payments made is $151,000. So with that we, subtraction, we end up with a net difference being $91,423. $91,423.30. That's the balance that's outstanding at year six. Now remember that we've borrowed $125,000 originally, and now we still owe $91,000 at the end of year six. This is also telling us that since we borrowed $125,000 and we still owe the $91,000 that we've paid off approximately $33,500 of the principal over the first six uh, years. Where do we go from here? Well, first of all, we start off with a new balance of 91,423. So we now have another time diagram with an opening balance of $91,423.30. That's what we're going to start off with. We also know that our new payment size is 25% more than the old payment size of $4,500. 25% more than $4,500 means that the new payment is going to equal $4,500 multiplied by 125% or 1.25 in decimal form. And so the new payment now becomes equal to a payment size of 56.25. And so now on our time diagram, we can show that these new payments of one, two, three, four, fifty six hundred and twenty five dollars fifty six twenty five will now be applied on our new uh, loan of $91,000, $56.25. So I'm going to wrap an annuity bus around that and say, here we go. Here's our annuity bus. And the question is, uh, how many payments are there? How many quarterly payments are required if you increase the uh, payment size to $56.25? And so let's carry on. Taking a look at the time diagram, we need to determine how many payments there are here and so we're going to use we're going to go back to the focal date we're going to choose a focal date of today and with that we're going to say that the present value that ninety one thousand four hundred and twenty three dollars and thirty cents is equal to the uh, size of the payment fifty six twenty five per quarter multiplied by the present value factor because the focal date is at the front end of the annuity bus so it'd be one minus one point zero two eight negative n exponent divided by 0 0.028 per quarter. So we've got quarterly payments and quarterly rate. So obviously the first step is going to be to divide 91,000 by 56.25 and you end up with a value of 16.253 and a whole bunch of other stuff. Leave all of that stuff on your calculator display and that's going to equal 1 minus 1.028 to the negative n exponent divided by 0 0.028. To eight. Now the question is, and you should always ask yourself this question, what is the significance of the 16.253? Well the significance is, is that you will require at least 16 payments. If there was 16.253 payments, if there were no interest rates uh, included in the calculations at all. So at a 0% rate, it would require 16 and a quarter payments approximately. We now know that the number of payments is definitely going to be greater than 16.25 for sure, because interest is involved and we, we can factor that in. So N is going to be greater than 16.25. Multiplying both sides now by 0 0.028. So 16 multiplied by 0 0.028. Again, use all the display numbers on your calculator, you'll end up with 0 0.455 and a whole bunch of other stuff is equal to 1 minus 1.028 to the negative n exponent. Subtracting 1 from both sides will end up with negative uh, 0.5449 etc is equal to 
minus 1.028 to the negative n exponent. Changing the signs, the two negative signs to positive, we'll end up with positive 0 0.5449 is equal to positive 1.028 raised to the negative n exponent. And so negative n will end up being the ln of 0 0.5449, etc., divided by the ln of 1.028. So now we're ready to work this out on our calculators. This works out to a value of negative n is equal to negative 21.9852, etc. We'll change that into a positive again. So positive n is equal to positive 21.9852, etc. What does that tell you? That tells you that we've got 21 full payments. So we've got 21 full payments of 56.25 and a 20-second smaller payment. And it's not going to be much smaller uh, than the others, but uh, certainly we'll need at least 22 payments of uh, 56.25 to pay off the rest of the loan. And 22 quarterly payments amounts to five and a half years. So we're looking at five and one half years of additional payments.